Folks, I do a lot of videos. Um, some of them have uh, specific audiences, black. Some of them specific audiences, white, and some in between. But then there are quite a few videos that I do that are targeted to everybody. This is one of those videos. Donald Trump, during uh, his campaign, gave a speech. And in that speech, he, quote unquote, was appealing for black votes. And he specifically said to black people, what do you have to lose by voting for me? Now, he gave that speech about 30 minutes outside of Milwaukee, which has a very large black population. But the city that he gave it in was 95% white. Now, he quote unquote was supposedly speaking to black people who I guess picked up uh, a feed or uh, saw the particular speech that he gave. But in actuality, he was speaking to all of the white people that were attending uh, that particular rally of his. And he was speaking to a lot of white people across the country. What do you have to lose by voting for Donald Trump? Well, folks, this is further evidence of what you are going to lose because you voted for Donald Trump. Trump to propose big cuts to safety net in new budget, slashing Medicaid and opening door to other limits. President Trump's first major budget proposal on Tuesday will include massive cuts to Medicaid and call for changes to anti-poverty programs, which would give states new power to limit a range of benefits, people familiar with the planning said, despite growing unease in Congress about cutting the safety net. For Medicaid, the state federal program that provides health care to low-income Americans Trump's budget plan would follow through on a bill passed by House Republicans to cut more than $800 billion over 10 years. The Congressional Budget Office has estimated that this could cut off Medicaid benefits for about 10 million people over the next decade. Now, folks, if you weren't aware of it, there are a lot of white people who benefit from the Medicaid expansion that Mr. Trump and the House Republicans basically are in favor of, since, especially since the House Republicans passed that uh, bill that uh, dramatically uh, slashes uh, benefits for the Affordable Care Act and in particular Medicaid. Now, it's going to be up to the Senate Republicans to try to curtail this. And to be honest with you, I do have a little hope, but not a lot, that they are going to make substantial changes to soften the blow that is obviously going to occur. Continuing, the White House will also call for giving states more flexibility to impose work requirements for people in different kinds of anti-poverty programs, people familiar with the budget plan said, potentially leading to a flood of changes in states led by conservative governors, i.e. Republican governors, obviously, and Republican-controlled legislatures. Many anti-poverty programs have elements that are run by both the states and federal government and a federal order allowing states to stiffen work requirements for able-bodied Americans could have a broad impact in terms of limiting who can access anti-poverty payments and for how long. Now, folks, there are a lot of people who are receiving assistance who are working, okay? But the amount of money that they are able to receive, earn from their jobs still has them at or below poverty levels. 
Well, guess what? Those people who are working, and I'm talking about just working people, they are going to see the monies that they are able to receive from these various anti-poverty programs slashed. So that's just going to sink them further and further down the poverty uh, pipe hole. Continuing, numerous social welfare programs grew after the financial crisis leading to complaints from many Republicans that more should be done to shift people out of these programs and back into the workforce. Yeah, that would be great if there were jobs out there that uh, paid a living wage that uh, people could work because, you know, newsflash, most people do want to work. Okay, there are some obviously who want to sit on their asses, but the majority of people want to work. They want to feel that they have earned a living and can survive based on their own uh, skill sets. But based on technology and shipping jobs overseas, it's become more and more difficult for a person, especially a person without a college degree, to find uh, employment that is going to pay them uh, what they need in order to just survive. And I'm not even talking about prospering. Anyway, shortly after he was sworn in, Trump said, we want to get our people off welfare and back to work. It's out of control. And that, he's probably right. Trump's decision to include the Medicaid cuts is significant because it shows he is rejecting calls from a number of Senate Republicans not to reverse the expansion of Medicaid that President Barack Obama achieved as part of the Affordable Care Act. The House has voted to cut Medicaid funding, but Senate Republicans have signaled they are likely to start from scratch. The proposed changes will be a central feature of Trump's first comprehensive budget plan, which will be the most detailed look at how he aims to change government spending and taxes over his presidency. Although Trump and his aides have discussed their vision in broad brushes, this will be the first time they attempt to put specific numbers on many aspects of those plans, shedding light on which proposals they see making the biggest difference in reshaping government. Congress must approve of most changes in the plan before it is enacted into law. Trump offered a streamlined version of the budget plan in March, but it dealt only with the 30% of government spending that is appropriated each year. In that budget, he sought a big increase in military and border spending combined with major cuts to housing, environmental protection, foreign aid, research and development. But Tuesday's budget will be more significant because it will seek changes to entitlement programs that are essentially on autopilot and don't need annual authorization from Congress. The people describing the proposal spoke on the condition of anonymity because the budget has not been released publicly and the White House is closely guarding details. The proposed changes include the big cuts to Medicaid. The White House also is expected to propose changes to the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Pro Program, though precise details couldn't be learned. SNAP is the modern version of food stamps and it swelled following the financial crisis as the Obama administration eased policies to make it easier for people to qualify for benefits. As the economy has improved, enrollment in the program hasn't changed as much as many had forecasted. Yeah, newsflash, the economy might have improved, but it has not worked its way down to the uh, low middle class and obviously to the uh, lowest economic uh, class in our country. So people still need help. But unfortunately, uh, Mr. Trump uh, doesn't believe that they do. For the numbers, an average of 44 million people received SNAP benefits in 2016, down from a peak of 47 million in 2013. Just 28 million people received the benefits in 2008. You know, and that's when everything uh, went to hell. SNAP could be one of numerous programs impacted by changes in work requirements. Josh Archambault, a senior fellow at the Foundation for Government Accountability, a conservative think tank, 
said that giving states the flexibility to impose work requirements could lead to a raft of changes to programs ranging from Medicaid to public housing assistance. One of the encouraging things about putting this in the budget is that states will see if it works, he said. States will try it. Um, newsflash, take a look at the state of uh, Kansas, where a lot of this uh, crap has been instituted, and ask uh, the people that uh, depend on those programs exactly uh, how they feel. If you didn't know it, the state of Kansas does have a severe work requirement for any type of uh, government assistance. They also have a drug testing, which is a waste of money because the studies have shown people that are on public assistance utilize drugs, quote unquote, at a much lower level than people who are not on any type of, of public assistance. Oh, and the funny thing about Kansas uh, that they had to change, they uh, give you a card in order to utilize your benefits, but you're only able, you were formerly only able to uh, get $25 in cash from the card to uh, spend on a daily basis. Now, that was such a clusterfuck that uh, the uh, Senate turned around and uh, made a change so that uh, the uh, maximum uh, you could draw from that card in cash on a daily basis was increased up to 100 bucks, which was a lot more livable, especially when if you use the card to draw cash, there were various fees assigned uh, to the withdrawal. Continuing, SNAP already has a work requirement which typically cuts benefits for most able-bodied adults who don't have children, but states were given more flexibility during the recent economic downturn to extend the benefits for a longer period, something that split conservatives at the time. Michael Tanner, a welfare expert at the Libertarian Cato Institute, said the U.S. government spends between 680 and 800 billion a year on anti-poverty programs, and considering wholesale changes to many of these initiatives is worthwhile, given questions about the effectiveness of how the money is spent. We're not seeing the type of gains we should be seeing for all the spending, and that would suggest it's time to reform the system, he said. Well, I would only hope that this guy would take a look at the uh, $680 billion a year we spend in defense and see uh, where uh, cuts could be made there. Oh, I forgot. They cannot audit uh, the defense spending by law. So we don't know exactly how much waste is in that $680 billion that we spend a year. And who benefits from that? I would say a lot of uh, that upper 1%. It's time that uh, we co did a complete audit on the Defense Department and cut a lot of the uh, waste and fraud that we know is prevalent within that particular industry. I mean, there was a report that I read, I believe it was about four months ago, where one defense contractor alone had built the government out of $225 million just on one uh, project. Now, you don't hear a lot of news about that, and I don't know whether they were able to get that $225 uh, million back from the guy or not, because nobody basically is covering those types of stories. But I do know one thing. We spent $680 billion, I believe. It's No, it's 650 That's a proposed number. We were spending 600 and they're proposing to go to 650 That 650 is more than the combined defense budgets of the next 10 countries combined. We need to, need to take a really hard look at uh, what we're spending this money on and do we really need to spend $650 billion on defense? My take on it is we could probably cut that budget 
by 50% and take that 50% and spend it on the people in this country, i.e. with a lot of uh, infrastructure, infrastructure projects, um, roads, bridges, our electrification system needs a major upgrade since it's uh, been rated as a D plus. There's a lot of stuff that we could take that defense money that in my opinion is being wasted or lining the pockets of these defense contractors and put it to use for the people. Anyway, let me continue. Many critics have said work requirements can include blanket ultimatums that don't take into account someone's age, physical or cognitive ability, or limitations put in place by the local economy. Benefits from these programs are often low and hardly replace the income someone would earn from a job. And critics of stricter work requirements also believe it could pave the way for states to pursue even stricter re restrictions, such as drug tests that courts have often rejected. After the Washington Post reported some of the cuts Sunday evening, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said Trump was pulling the rug out from so many who need help. This budget continues to reveal President Trump's true colors. His populist campaign rhetoric was just a Trojan horse to execute long-held, hard-right policies that benefit the ultra-wealthy at the expense of the middle class, he said. The proposed changes to Medicaid and SNAP will be just some of the of several anti-poverty programs that the White House will look to change. In March, the White House signaled that it wanted to eliminate money from a range of other programs that are funded each year by Congress. This included federal funding for Habitat for Humanity, subsidized school lunches, and the U.S. Interagency Council on Homelessness, which coordinates the federal response for homelessness across 19 federal agencies. Well, with this budget, if Trump gets his way, uh, they uh, are going to need a lot more help as far as uh, dealing with homeless because this budget that Mr. Trump is proposing is going to put a lot of people out on the street. It's also going to have a lot of kids hungry uh, during the day since uh, they will no longer be able to receive subsidized school lunches. Leaked budget documents obtained by the think tank Third Way suggested other ways the White House plans to change anti-poverty funding. These documents show a change in the funding for Social Security Supplemental Security Income Program, which provide cash benefits for the poor and disabled. It's unclear, though, what those changes might look like. A White House official said the third way document was out of date and would not comment on specifics in their files. Medicaid, SNAP, and the SSI program are now classified as mandatory spending because they are funded each year without congressional approval. Trump has instructed his budget director, former South Carolina Congressman Mick Mulvaney, that he does not want cuts to Medicare and Social Security retirement programs in this budget. Mulvaney recently said the plan may call for changes to Social Security disability insurance, seeking ways, ideas, I'm sorry, for ways to move people who are able out of this program and back into the workforce where there are no jobs. A key element of the budget plan will be the assumption that huge tax cuts will result in unprecedented levels of economic growth. Trump recently unveiled the broad principles of what he said will be the biggest in U.S. history, and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin told the Senate panel last week that these cuts would end up creating trillions of dollars in new revenue, something budget experts from both parties have disputed. Um, if any of you remember uh, Ronald Reagan saying the th same thing when he put in huge uh, tax cuts, it's called trickle-down economics. Well, we already found out that when you give rich people more money, they tend not to spend it. And when they do spend it, they tend not to spend it here. They like to build a factories for products overseas where labor costs are significantly less and then import all of that stuff in this direction. So that trickle down doesn't trickle down to us and it doesn't even trickle down to the people overseas because of the low wages that uh, they are paid. Net net, the money goes up into 
the rich people's pockets who think, well, um, they put the money into uh, banks and banks are supposed to loan money out. Uh, yeah, the banks are loaning money out at low interest rates to those guys, but you try going in there for a, a bank loan and see what interest rate uh, they are willing to give you. <coughs> Excuse me. As this article indicates, the tax cuts would particularly benefit the wealthiest Americans as Trump has, propo has proposing cutting the estate tax. Okay, not too many people benefit from that. Capital gains, I don't think too many poor or middle class people benefit from that. And business tax rates, maybe a few middle class people would benefit from that, but poor people are not gonna benefit from uh, those particular tax cuts. The indications are strong. This budget will feature Robin Hood and reverse policies in unprecedented scale, said Robert Greenstein, president of the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, a left-leaning think tank. The White House will use its presumed new revenue from the tax cuts combined with broad spending cuts to claim that its changes would eliminate the budget deficit over 10 years. Obviously, the budget deficit is the gap between government spending and tax revenue, and there has been a deficit in the U United States every year since the end of the Clinton administration. Folks, what's going to end up happening here is poor people and middle class people are going to be hurt, rich people are going to receive huge benefits, and this budget proposal is going to blow our deficit out of the water it's going to expand our national debt astronomically. Anyway, I fall back to my initial statement. Donald Trump was talking not just to black people, but to all Americans where, when he said, vote for me, what do you have to lose? Well, there are going to be a lot of Trump voters who are going to lose if this budget comes anywhere close to fruition. But again, you went for the okie doke. You get what you pay for, and you now you have a flipping idiot in the White House who doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground and you are going to pay the price for it.